Hi there and welcome back to a second episode of the series of the Real Estate on the Cheap Mini Challenge. As promised in the first episode, we're going to be focusing a bit more on the mindset. Now, this is important because our mind guides what we will or will not do. Oftentimes, we get excited about something at the forefront of it. For example, we attend a seminar, a webinar, buy a book, we read it, we get so excited about it. And then as we get into it, something happens where we pretty much sabotage ourselves and never move forward with it, right? Like how many times have you purchased a book, for example? And you said, oh yes, this is gonna be a perfect book. I'm gonna read it. And then you buy it and it arrives and you put it on a shelf and then it starts collecting dust. And a year goes by, two years go by, three years go by, you never read it. Now, will you benefit from that book if you never read it? The answer is of course, absolutely not. Now you bought it for a reason, right? Why did you buy it? Well. Obviously, there was something in the book that got you excited about it, whether it was a work of fiction from your favorite author and you just wanted to go and read it, or maybe it was nonfiction book and uh, there was information in it. Maybe you heard it from a friend or maybe even a YouTuber that they were talking about what different aspects and what different things this particular book can offer. And you thought to yourself, hey, this could be a great way for me to learn about XYZ. Maybe you wanted to learn how to trade stocks and you bought a book on stocks, or maybe you wanted to learn how to trade options or crypto or develop a website or whatever. And somehow over the time, you never actually went through it. Crazy enough story is a couple of things that you may or may not know about me. So I guess let's get to know each other just a little bit in case you're brand new to me and to the whole channel. I, uh, well, I grew up back in Serbia, Yugoslavia at that time. And I came to United States when I was 18 years of age and, uh, I've never left. So I've been here in U S for a very, very long time. Some of you might've picked up on the accent. Some of you have no clue. And this is a complete surprise. Hello. Anyways, I, uh, I started to, by having a job in higher education and I actually still have a job in higher education. It's a different job, but I still have a job and I keep it for all kinds of different reasons that we're not going to get into. But what I realized is that my job is never going to get me retired or to the point where I can feel good about things or I want to do stuff. And so I decided that it's time to start looking into investing. And of course I, even though I went to the business school and I got my MBA, I had no clue what the heck I was doing in the market. So what did I do? Well, I listened to one person, actually I listened to a couple of different people, uh, predominantly on MSNBC. And since then, let me tell you, I threw the TV away. I no longer own TV or cable for that matter. Uh, not that they were the reason, but they definitely didn't help. Anyways, I listened to some of the folks and there's one particular individual that I'm not going to name for my own personal protection, but let's just put it out there that now on Reddit and even on YouTube, you might follow strategies that I called basically do the complete opposite of what this particular person tells you. If you know who that is, hey, congratulations. If you don't, just be careful who you listen to. That's all I'm going to say. Anyways, I listened to what they said and I would buy the stocks. And when they said buy, I bought. And then they said buy more and then I would buy more. And they said, oh, now you own real estate. I'm like, yes. What did I own? I owned REITs. I did not own a single property, I did not participate in it. They said, buy mutual funds. So I went and bought mutual funds. And I never realized that by buying mutual funds and putting 100% of the money, I'm taking 100% of the risk. And I only, if everything goes perfectly well, get only 30% of the benefit. Now that's crazy, right? But nobody teaches you that kind of stuff. But I did it because I was motivated. I wanted to do this. Next thing you know, 2007 shows up. Real estate is going crazy. Everybody's becoming a realtor. People are buying, ninja loans are everywhere. Complete mayhem. At this moment in time, I was living in Southern California and I thought to myself, oh my goodness, I need to become a 
real estate agent because they are the ones who are making money. All of my friends are actually taking real estate courses. They're all trying to become agents. Everybody's going completely bananas, crazy. I am going out there buying stocks. I can't qualify necessarily to do what I wanted to do for particular legal reasons, uh, immigrant and all of that stuff, although that has been covered. So blessed to be here and able to stay without any of those complications. However, I was not able to participate and turned out to be a blessing in disguise because what came after 2007? Well, 2008, you got it. And what came in end of 2007 and into 2008? Well, it was a real estate market clash. I mean, it was a mother of all crashes. And everybody at that point was saying, hey, real estate can never go down. It can never go down. And of course, everybody kept buying and buying and buying and borrow and buy and borrow and buy. And then we reach the top. And then when you reach the top, well, there's only one way to go, and that is the way down. And down we went. The prices started to crash. The mayhem ensued. Fed had to step in. A lot of people lost homes, destroyed their credits for the next seven to 10 years. And of course, uh, we all talk about it now in history, especially those of us that were there to watch it and witness it. Right after that, I decided it's time to go in and invest. And that is when I started going into real estate and learning about different strategies and different ways to do it. And there are some mainstream strategies like go out on Zillow, although Zillow wasn't really a thing at that time. I mean, it was, but it wasn't as much. Let's just put it, put it out there, right? Like find a realtor, find a place, right? So that was, yes, a strategy, but there are other strategies that allow you to go in and get uh, uh, into a property that is being foreclosed on. Maybe they're foreclosed by the bank. Maybe they're foreclosed by the government. Maybe they're, uh, there's some sort of uh, issue that maybe a owner has passed away and now it's going to the probate and that's how it's going to be sold. So there's different ways that you can get into real estate. Of course, there's another way where you can actually be a lender in real estate. Imagine that, right? You're, you, you know about being a borrower, but you could be a lender in real estate. So there's all these cool strategies that exist out there. And I was fascinated with the world. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to be this. So I went through, took some courses. And here's the thing about me is that when I get into the course, I make sure that I complete it because you know what? I paid good money for it. So I make sure to commit and, and, and do whatever I need to do in order to at least, if nothing else, test the strategy. But it's not just the taking of the course. It's once you complete the course, you actually have to take some action and do something with it. So I am very firm about those pieces. Now, I will be also very honest to tell you that there have been some books that I purchased because I wanted to get into them. But, you know, things happen. Life happens. Uh, you know, parents get ill or you got to take care of the kids or you got to take your dog to the vet or whatever the issues are. And, you know, time, the clock ticks. It doesn't care for you or me or anybody else. Time moves on. And if we are not committing ourselves to take the time to do specific actions all the time, consistently over the time, well, time will pass and nothing else will change. So there have been books that I purchased that I still have on my shelf collecting the dust and diligently every week i dust it off and go yep tomorrow so let's learn something from me and hopefully yourself let's not say tomorrow let's do it right now let's not postpone for things let's schedule time to do it Another example that I'm going to be completely transparent in 2020, when the whole crazy pandemic thing started, I said, you know what, we're going to do this. I am petrified of going live on YouTube, so I'm going to do live shows every single day. And I did it. I actually did it for quite a few months and I got over my fear of going live and I got over my fear of getting in front of a camera and doing all kinds of stuff. Because interestingly enough, I was perfectly fine doing live events, doing live seminars, teaching classes, because I 
have and I do teach classes uh, live in person with small groups, large groups, you know, anywhere from tutoring a single person all the way to groups as large as a few hundred to a couple thousand people. So I am comfortable doing those pieces, but for some odd reason, staring at a freaking camera, not knowing what's happening on the other side, it was different for me. Now, I know a lot of educators probably felt the same way when the pandemic hit and you had to go on Zoom. You're like, I am teaching a camera how to sew a sweater or cook a meal or do algebra, whatever it is that you are teaching people. And it's weird and it's very awkward, can be very awkward. But one of the things that happened is that as it was all moving on, I was actually starting to realize it was taking too much time and I stepped away. Now. Could I have potentially found time? Yes. Did I quit it or, well, didn't quit it. I'm still around. I'm still doing this stuff. Hello. But I did postpone it. I put it on a pause for a very specific reason. Those were a couple of the reasons were that I wanted to get deep into uh, Web3 development to understand how to actually build websites and do the uh, tech stuff and wanted to uh, implement some of the pieces into my business and do coaching and really expand on the services to be able to assist folks. So I did have a plan of why I postponed it. If that is who you are and you're saying, well, yes, I have a plan and I might need to postpone it, that is fine. What you want to do, what I would suggest you do, is schedule it. Now, time and time again, there's a thing called science. Maybe you believe in it, maybe you don't. I'm not judging. I personally happen to believe in science and research. And science and research basically tell us is that you can motivate people all you want, which is what I'm trying to do here, in case you're wondering what's going on. You can motivate them and people are going to feel like all oh, rah, rah, which is why if you've ever attended a conference, a webinar, a seminar, whatever, you walk out of that stuff and you feel all kinds of pump like, yes, I can do this. The challenge is that if you don't schedule things you want to do into your actual schedule and you're not specific enough on how you're going to address this and how you're going to take care of it, you're never going to do it. There was a science that was actually shared in one of the books. I believe it's something with habits. So if you remember it, make sure you put it into the comments. Drop me a line. Let me know what it is. Uh, let everybody know what it is. But anyways, they were going out there and they were uh, they had a, a, a groups of people that they were uh, following. So they had a large group of people. They split them into three dif different groups. One group was basically said, all right, you're just going to work out. The second group was given a motivational speech and was going to go work out. And the third group was given a motivational speech, was told to work out. But they did one thing that was a bit different. And that is they actually put it down of when they're going to do it what they're going to do, how they're going to do it. And here's a key. They also put in, if something falls through, what is my fallback plan? Very interesting. So what happened? Well, the people that were going to go and like try to work out, they might've gone once or twice. I mean, it was well over 90% failure rate. No bueno. The motivational group, they were like, yes, this is going to work. Motivational group, did just as well or as bad, depending how you look at it, as the first group that didn't even get motivated. They were really excited. They were very pumped when they left, unlike the other group. So they felt good in the moment. However, and it's automated, automatic ha uh, habits, auto automated habits, something like that. So that's the book. Anyways, I remembered it. Uh, but anyways, they, they didn't do much of, 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 of it. Anyways, the third group, the group that actually was like, yes, we're going to go work out. Yes, we got motivated. And yes, we wrote down specific things of when I'm going to work out. What am I going to do during the workout? How am I going to work out? And what is my fallback plan? If I cannot work out on the schedule time, what is my fallback plan? How am I going to deal with failure? Yes. That group outperformed the other two groups combined and they had this like crazy success rate. 
So why am I sharing this with you? Well, part of the stuff that I shared at the beginning is just so, I, so that we can get to know each other just, just a little bit more. But the second part, the most recent part that I share with you is the importance to understand what this particular thing between your ears, behind your eyes can do is important to understand how it operates. I'm fascinated with how brains operate and what they will or will not allow us to do. So here's the thing to take away from. If this or anything else for that matter, but because I am doing the real estate on the cheap mini challenge right now, if looking for a way to potentially improve your financial picture and potentially get into real estate investing or maybe build a business around the whole thing, then it might not be the worst idea on the planet to start working on yourself and your own personal development. And with that comes working on your mindset. Now, it's one thing to say, I want the big house, right? We all say, you know, to quote, uh, and again, so I hate when this happens. I don't know, does this ever happen to you? Because it happens to me all the time, more than I care to admit. Anyways, uh, Tim Ferriss show, that's what it was. See, it comes to me, but it's just, there's like a delay. Uh, anyways, Tim Ferriss show, he interviewed somebody and I can't remember who it was, but it was one of those interesting pieces that I really took to heart that said, you know, yes, it's easy to know what you want or what you don't want because, and if it was that easy, we all would be multimillionaires with six pack abs, but most of us don't have that. And there's a reason. Because it's not just about the want and desire. We spend so much time thinking about it. And I know there are some of the gurus out there that say, oh, just visualize, just visualize. Well, visualizing is great and there are some benefits to it. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in the next episodes. But you actually have to take some action in order for all of this to work out. Because I can sit here and visualize million dollar bag dropping in my bag, million dollar bag, million dollar bag, million dollar bag, million dollar bag, dropping in my lap, dropping in my lap. And then I open my eyes and I guess what? I nothing dropped. I mean you've been watching it. I'm I'm doing the 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 actual recording here. Did you see a giant bag drop? No. I mean I was very into it. I closed my eyes. I was focused on it, right? So there's a certain reason why we visualize, and again, we'll talk about it. But again, in order for me to get that million dollars to drop, and it's not going to drop from the sky. I mean, only in cartoons could you see that. Not even in movies, cartoons. And even that is a maybe. You have to do something about it. You have to change your actions, change your thinking, change your conversation, work on improving yourself. Now, one of the things that we're doing in this mini challenge is to give you some of the tools and ideas and things to think through, notes to take. Uh, there's a huge benefit on note taking that there's a connection. And I'm not saying like take the notes on a computer. I know a lot of people do that. I know a lot of people like passively sit through the classes and passively listen to stuff. I am saying, wait, wait, wait. I got one of these, right? It's called a notebook paper version. And I have a thing called pencil, or you can use a pen. I prefer pencil just because I like the way that it feels on the pages when I write. Take notes, journal, put down things that you want, not just things that you want, but also a clean path of what you think you can do in order to fix it. And then go back and look at it and say, did action A give me the result that I was looking for? If the answer is no, then go back and try a different action. Did action B give me the results I wanted? No. Action C. Now, here's the thing. You don't want to like try something once and say, well, nothing happened, right? Like for example, uh, me with, let's, let's use me as an example uh, on, on the YouTube uh, piece, right? Um, I don't expect, nor have I ever expected that I'm going to go out there put one video and all of a sudden I'm going to have million subscribers. It doesn't work that way, right? So you put one video, 
it's probably sucky, but it's okay. And you put another one and another one and nobody's listening. And by video number five, you're calling like your mother and asking her if she would subscribe. So at least you have one person. And of course you use a different uh, email address or a few different ones. So now you have five and you're four of those and mom is one of them, that kind of stuff. And it's okay. But over time, the expectation is that you put energy in, put energy in, put energy in and see if A, you improve, B, if there is results that you are hoping for. Now, how do we do that? You have to be very critical, but not so critical of yourself where you basically say, you're the dumbest human being on the planet. Shut her down. Don't do that, you know, but you can go and be critical to say, well, in my first video, I was doing a lot of ums and likes and I couldn't keep my own attention up. Nonetheless, somebody else's and it's my video. It's my video. So if that is the case, then work on removing those ums and likes and all of those things. Come up with the ways to engage. Come up, go go to take a course on, on speeches, uh, improv, whatever, right? Like practice on the stuff. Work on the skill that you want to get in on. That goes for everything. Riding a bike, I don't know about you, but Lord knows I did not, you know, look at a bike, climb on a darn thing and just like went to town. I looked at a bike. It was scary. It was bigger than I was. I wasn't, I couldn't even reach it from the seat down to the pedals. So I had to do like that standing biking thing, weird, right? I fell off more times than I care, but eventually I picked it up. I learned it and hey, I even done some tricks, although most of those ended up with me landing flat on the ground anyways, which is why I'm not BMX rider. Uh, not for me. <laughs> I wasn't willing to do it. I share these things to actually get you inspired and not just motivated because that's not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to give you tools so that you can start thinking through of what is necessary for success. So let's recap of what we have hopefully learned by now. One mindset is very, very important Two, motivation is cool, but it only lasts so long. It's kind of like eating sugar. You get a sugar high and then you crash. Same thing with motivation. You want to eat something that is much more sustainable that will keep you going for hours on end before you start slowly crashing. That is the same thing with what happens with planning when we're talking about stuff. Come up with what you're looking to do. And in this case instance, if you are looking for a way to get into real estate and not pay the top dollar for it and come up with ways, well then what you want to do is put it down. Hey, that's what I want to do. I'm going to actually spend an hour every week or 30 minutes every day or 10 minutes uh, uh, every night or whatever you want, specifically what I'm going to do it. Well, I'm going to watch these videos whenever they come out or I'm going to watch these videos on Sunday morning when I wake up with my cup of coffee or tea or whatever it is that you enjoy in the morning and I'm going to spend 30 minutes every Sunday doing this stuff and if something happens on a particular Sunday like for example a snowstorm or the in-laws are coming in and I got to entertain them I can't do this if I can't do it on Sunday first thing in the morning I'll do it Monday after work or Monday during lunch hour right so come up with those things and schedules of what's important to you put it in your calendar commit to it long enough and stay consistent with it if this is helpful Another piece that can also help you with continuing with this is to like, subscribe, comment, bell button, and I will see you in the next episode. And until then, remember, you are only one deal away.